Welcome to Living Springs. These are your announcements. Evening service, Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth every Wednesday, prayer 6 p.m., service 6.30. Intercessory prayer every Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Adult Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Overflow Youth Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Sunday's Special Offering, Overflow Youth Ministry. Thanksgiving Luncheon, November 19th. Happy Thanksgiving, no service, November 22nd. Special Speaker, November 26th. Jessica Valencia. Don't forget your change, Buddy Barrel Sunday, November 26th. Let's go to camp. Sign up for Children's Camp today. Overflow Youth, the Mallet Fundraiser. Order now until November 28th. Pickup slash delivery, November 30th. Christmas Caroling at Dogwood Trails Assisted Living, December 16th. Connect with us on Instagram and Facebook. Guests, please scan QR code to stay connected. Thank you for joining us. Have a great service. Oh, good morning, everyone. How are y'all doing? <laughs> Let's stand up and worship. Good morning, Oh, 
there's power in the presence, power in the blood, power in the name of Jesus. He has more in the hem of his garment than the camp of the enemy. There's power in the praise, power in the blood, power in the name of Jesus. More in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. 
I want you to grab the person next to you, hug them, hold their hand, whatever it is. But I want you to start praying and declaring Jesus over their lives, whether they're family to you, whether they are a friend. In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, will we lift them up to you right now? you have done, Lord. But more than that, Lord, for just who you are and how you play a part in our lives every single day and how we can always lean on you no matter what. Lord, thank you for friends and family that we get to spend time with, especially during the holiday season. And Lord, bless those that don't get to see their family anymore. Lord, right now I just ask that you just restore the peace in the hearts today that are feeling lonely this holiday season. And we'll remind them what they have to be grateful for because you are always working. Lord, as we continue on with the service, Lord, we just ask that your presence stay with us. Because where two or more are gathered, he is there. Amen? So, Lord, in Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor. I want you to tell them I love you so much. These are your announcements. Evening service, Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth every Wednesday. Prayer, 6 p.m. Service, 6.30. Intercessory Prayer every Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Adult Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Overflow Youth Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Sunday's Special Offering, Overflow Youth Ministry, Thanksgiving Luncheon, November 19th. Happy Thanksgiving, No Service, November 22nd. Special Speaker, November 26th, Jessica Valencia. Don't forget your change, Buddy Barrel Sunday, November 26th. Let's go to camp. Sign up for Children's Camp today. Let's go Overflow Youth Tamale Fundraiser. Order now until November 28th. Pickup slash delivery November 30th. Christmas Caroling at Dogwood Trails Assisted Living December 16th. Connect with us on Instagram and Facebook. Guests, please scan QR code to stay connected. Thank you for joining us. Have a great service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, what a great day to be in the presence of the Lord. Uh, I just want to take a special moment uh, here at Living Springs to say thank you to all our members who are here today, but also a special thank you to all our guests that have joined us here today. Amen. Thank you. Uh, also to our guests, if you're new online, thank you for tuning in today. If it's your first time, we pray that you are blessed through the live stream. Amen. Uh, we also have, uh, if you're a guest and you haven't received one of these welcome cards, please see our ushers in the back or see somebody and we'll make sure to get this to you and you can just drop it in the offering and we uh, here at Living Springs love to follow up with you, okay? Um, also, we have a QR code that you can connect with us on the back, uh, connect to us through social media, all those things, fun events that we have going on here at Living Springs, amen? Um, so without further ado, um, today is... The Sunday specials offering is for Overflow Youth Ministry, amen? Um, I just have a, a quick scripture to read to you before I get into that. And um, 
2 Corinthians 9, 9, 6, it says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And it goes on to say, So let each one give, give as he pur- uh, purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And it goes to say, and God is able, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Man, sounds like a promise to me, don't it? <laughs> and today I just, I pray that it's in your heart that whatever the Lord puts on your heart to give to our overflow youth ministry here, we appreciate it. And then I don't know what it is, but something about sowing into the next generation that is rising up, that is preaching the word and reaching souls that are lost is something I want to sow into. It's something I want to invest in, something we have already been doing and going to continue to do. And I pray that Living Springs, our members here can join us in that as we sow into the the youth and the young generation rising up. And we're already seeing the fruit of that labor. We're already seeing that. Did you know that we have a Jesus club here? Did you know that our youth has stepped up to take that lead to bring Jesus to their high school? Amen? Amen. Right? Amen. It's all about disciples making disciples. But we need everybody of the members to come together in order for that to happen. So today, church, I pray that the Lord put a number on your heart that you give. We got camp coming up this summer. And we know God's always going to show up and show out. So I'm going to pray for this offering. I'm going to ask the ushers to step, to come forward to take up the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that, that Lord, that we're able to gather today in your presence, Father God. Just thank you, Father, for blessing us and taking care of your children nonstop, Father God. Lord, I pray for this offering, Lord Jesus. I pray that you bless it tenfold. I pray that you bless the giver tenfold today. I declare that finances will come to the giver today in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And we all say? Thank you as you give today. Thank you to all our guests online. Again, there are ways to give. Uh, Scan the QR code on the back of your pamphlet. Uh, If you're a busy person like myself, that is what I use because I don't have time to go by the bank. (laughs) So, (laughs) again, thank you all as you give. Amen. Are you glad this morning? Yes. Are you glad this morning? (laughs) Praise God. I'm glad that you're glad. Isn't he good? How about another special uh, hand clap for our worship team this morning? Good job, Jessica and team. Thank you, Jesus. So glad to have again all of our guests here with us today. Thank you, Pastor Adam, for that uh, leading into that with the offering. Thank you for that, sir. Yes, amen. Thankful, 
grateful, blessed. These are all words that we like to use in our life as a Christian believer, right? How many times do you often feel thankful, grateful, and blessed? God is a God who speaks amen to us even when we don't want to listen. Somebody say amen to that. He's still a God who speaks to us when we struggle with feeling grateful, thankful, and blessed. Why? Because God loves us. Loves us. Here's some stories of thankfulness this morning from Scripture. And again, so, so, so glad all of you are here with us today. Glad to have my in-laws here today. Happy Thanksgiving. Be in Big Pop. We love you guys. All those watching by life. God is so good. And so leading into Thanksgiving, I wanted to share some stories of thankfulness from Scripture and then talk about how we can return to a place of understanding that God is good when we come to His, His altar of grace. The Ten Lepers, Luke 17, 11 through 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten lepers, uh, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And they went and they were cleansed. Praise God. But it didn't stop there. The story didn't stop there. One of them when he saw that he was healed, he came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. All important points. And Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Great question from Jesus. Where are the other nine? No one has returned to give praise to God except this foreigner. And then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Are you thankful this morning? Out of the ten lepers, Jesus healed one only went back to thank him. This man, completely free from illness, but full of faith, hallelujah, knelt at Jesus' feet thanking him for showing mercy. Because of his gratitude, God healed him far deeper than more uh, than the other nine men were healed. When Jesus said in verse 19, rise and go, your faith has made you will, it appears that this man's soul had also been healed as, as much as his leprosy. Something that only out of our love and appreciation for God can we achieve. We must return to the Lord. Amen. Jesus and the sinful woman. Luke 7, through 50. Then he turned toward the woman and said, said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. He's getting on to his disciples a little bit here about serving. But she wet my feet with her tears. And wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time that I have entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume all over my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. And the other guests began to say among themselves, who is this? Who even forgives sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Upon learning of Jesus' visitation to the Pharisees' home, this sinful woman came to beg and weep for forgiveness. She knew of her mistakes that she had committed and is now seeking mercy from the Son of God because of her remorse. She lavishly praised Jesus at his feet by using a bottle of perfume in exchange for oil. Her great love and devotion has made her well. And in the end, the Lord wholly forgave her, showing us that we too can receive penance by faith and gratefulness. We must return to the Lord. God's will, 1 Thessalonians 5, 15 through 18. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong. Always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 15-18 God asks us to maintain the peace and have a higher regard for those who work and dedicate their lives to serving Him. He told us to always be grateful regardless of circumstances, seek the good in the bad, and endlessly pray and rejoice. This passage is a reminder to thank the Lord no matter the situation. As stewards of God's creation, let us take His word to heart and live with these things in mind. 
we must return to the Lord. David's psalm of, of giving grateful praise. Psalm 100, 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Lines up with our song we just sang for offering, doesn't it? And in the entire book of Psalms, David praised God regardless of what he was facing or struggling with. This passage alone shows his devotion and gratitude to the Lord in spite of his trials and doubt. In return, this teaches us that no matter what happens, it's important to give thanks. Be grateful for everything and rejoice in God's name for he is our creator and our almighty father. Whether or not it's thanksgiving, we should learn to say a little prayer for th of thanks every single day. It's the least we can do for everything that we have received from our Heavenly Father. We must return to the Lord. A Psalm of David, Psalm 23, 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Listen to these words from the psalmist. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We must return to the Lord. We must know that He loves us. Amen and amen. These are all stories of thankfulness and gratitude throughout Scripture. Where God speaks to His creation, yet still, through the Scriptures, amen. As God was the Word in the flesh coming into us, coming to us, amen. To say, I love you, I love you, I love you. Did you know when Jesus speaks, it's more than just man's kind of love. He speaks on another level of love, saying to us that I cherish you. I cherish you even more than you can ever know or consider. I cherish you past the point of your pain. I cherish you past the place of regret. I cherish you that you might know how to be thankful and grateful for the things that I have given you in fullness and in kind. God placed, amen, everything upon His Son so that we may know the goodness and the value of His love for us. Jesus Christ is still, amen, everything, the all in all, the great I am, the great one, amen, coming again to rescue you and me from the ways of sinfulness in this world. This morning we have a place of understanding that God is for us, never against us, always encouraging, always uplifting, always challenging us to the next place in life. Always enduring, amen, to help us see our way, to help us overcorrect those faults in our life, to become better men and better women for the high call of Jesus Christ. And knowing that place of understanding that God is our rescue, church, we must return unto the Lord, amen. For He is still the great salvation, He is still the great way, He is still the great truth, and He is still the great life, hallelujah, and amen. There's another great story this morning that comes from the book of Hosea, chapter 6. It says these words to us in verse 1 through 3. Come, say that with me this morning. Come, and let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. Somebody say amen. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us, and on the third day, he will raise us up. A prelude, amen, to the raising of Christ Jesus from the very grave. That we may live in his sight. Did you know that Jesus is still gazing upon you with his very eyes today in this very moment? That we may know. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Are you pursuing the knowledge, the relationship, the place of intimacy with Christ Jesus today? His going forth is established as the morning. Aren't you grateful for this beautiful morning that we had today? 
It's so nice outside. I got up at 5 o'clock this morning, rose up with that sunshine, amen, that cup of coffee in my hand, went on my front porch and said, thank you, Jesus, for another morning. I get to worship your holy name. I get to praise you. I get to live for you. I am grateful this morning, Lord. For his going forth is established as the morning. For he will come to us like the rain. Like the latter rain and the former rain to this earth and this very earth that we call home. This morning, God is saying to us, you must return unto me. Let's say a prayer this morning, shall we? Father, I thank you for this Thanksgiving week. Oh, that we get to celebrate life with our families and our, and our friends and our loved ones. I'm so grateful for this church family, God, that you have called your own. Lord, we need each other now more than ever. And in this season, Father God of Thanksgiving, I thank you, Lord, that I can be grateful for those that you have called, amen, into this church. And for those that, Lord Jesus, you're establishing to do great things in this earth. Lord, I am grateful this morning for my family. I'm grateful, Lord God, for these people. I am thankful, Lord Jesus, that you are working good works in this place. To God be the glory for the great things he's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hosea chapter 1 is the prelude of this great passage of Scripture in Hosea chapter 6, where it establishes a truth within us, bringing about a story of Hosea the prophet and Gomer his wife. I've never encountered another person named Gomer, and I've certainly not ever encountered another woman named Gomer. Praise God for the Gomer of this story that makes her unique in identity identifying with who we are as God's one and only chosen people. We are the Gomer of life in this world today. But there is a Hosea. There's a Jesus that still prophesies unto us. Hosea 1, 2 through 5. When the Lord began to speak by Hosea. Interesting how God still speaks, amen, through his Hosea. The power of Jesus through the power of the Spirit of God. The Lord said to Hosea, go take yourself a wife of harlotry and children of harlotry. For the land has committed great harlotry by departing from the Lord. So when he took Gomer, the daughter of Diblium, and she conceived and bore him a son, then the Lord said to him, call his name Jezreel. For in a little while I will avenge the bloodshed of Jezreel on the house of Jehu and bring an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. It shall come to pass in that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. The illustration of Hosea the prophet and Gomer, his wife, is an illustration of those who have turned their backs on the Lord, only to find out later that he was the answer the whole time. Our God, church, is a jealous God. He longs for our hearts to be his and his alone. Deuteronomy 4.24 says, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Church, I long, amen, for that consuming fire. How about you this morning? I long, amen, for the presence of God from this very pulpit to rain His presence upon us in such a way, amen, that would manifest His glory from day to day, from moment to moment. I believe, amen, in the presence of God returning and back to His people to empower us, to speak to us, to give us wisdom and knowledge, to give us a hope for our futures. Exodus 34, 14 says, For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous, His very name is jealous for you and for you alone. He is a jealous God. He is compassionate towards you. He is kind. But choosing your own way will cause trouble for you and for those around you. Have you ever had trouble in your life? Have you ever had things happen to you that didn't make sense, that caused problems for you and for your families? Can I tell you, it's a selfish way that leads, amen, to these things in your life. It's a selfish way that you would only think about yourself and your troubles. You'd only consider the things that you want and desire. You only try to make a way for you and for no one else. You consider nothing else but your only problems in the world. See, Gomer placed her own selfish desires before her husband, before her children. She made choices that put her in a place of judgment and outside of God's favor. 
Do you want the favor of the Lord this morning, church? That when we put our selfish desires before God and our family, we should surely perish in this land. We should put our desires, amen, back in the place, the feet of Jesus, that we might return to Him, amen, for answers. The harlot turning from her first love to have another. The world entices us to be this harlot, to turn away from Jesus, to try to make our own way, to try to be our own person. The world entices us by luxuries of life, by ways of the world manipulated by an enemy called Satan who devises these things with great division. Businessmen or women often ties to a place of business. Their business needs, their needs of the industry before the needs of their family. Lonely husbands or wives are enticed to cheat with one another because of addiction and a pornography enticed scenario. Many, many husbands and wives in the church are struggling today because of their lack, amen, of keeping their eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. The one who tried to make an honest living, who really gave it a shot in life, turns to a life of gambling or crime to try to get by. The lustful woman who has become pregnant and chooses abortion. Or the sober man down on his luck, he begins to drink or take drugs. These are the ones that God desires to have back. He desires to win their hearts again. He desires that the lost would come to know his name once again. He desires that they would turn to him and return to him. If you pursue these things, though, your heart does not belong to Jesus. It belongs to the world. Satan rejoices in these things. He rejoices over every lost soul that is enticed by his words and not the words of our Heavenly Father. Satan despises God, and he despises you being in love with God even more. He desires your heart and your soul to be his and his alone. Satan is jealous too. He wants you all to himself. He longs to destroy anything made in the image of God, and that means you and me. But, amen, for the buts in life, God loves you. God does not want you to perish. God longs for you to have life and life to the fullness. Somebody say amen to that this morning. He wants you to live and have a life full of joy. Amen to that this morning. God wants us to choose Him before all things so that He may give us the key of life. Romans 5, 8 says this, But God demonstrates His own love towards us. Say me, that in while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for you. Christ died for me. I've got an illustration this morning. I'm going to ask my help to come up this morning. Please, sir. <laughs> Amen for good help. Can we give him a hand this morning? Thank you, River. This is a door. It's got hinges. It's got handles. It's got a lock. My father-in-law made this one. He didn't, he didn't know that I was going to use this illustration. But every door that has a lock has a key. Yes? And every key goes to a lock somewhere. You can try many different keys. I have several different keys here on this table that we can attempt to open this lock, right? We can try to use car keys. But man, oh my goodness. I love, I love my car. I love my little red Jeep that I have outside. It's so fun to drive. This is the key that goes to that Jeep, but it, it certainly won't fit this. This is to my daughter's little, little car. She loves her little car. It means a lot to her. It got her from Palestine, Texas to Waxahachie, Texas, where she's going to school to learn more about the gospel so she can preach it to the world. But it doesn't fit this lock. Then there's my son's little red truck that he loves to drive that I got to bless him with, that I worked hard for and I paid for so I could give it to my son so he can work now and have a job, which he just started last week. Amen. 
<laughs> and serve the Lord there and lead people to Jesus at Brookshire's in Palestine, Texas. But this key won't fit this one. It's specific, isn't it? I have keys to my house. It's a great house. I love living there. It's an old house in an old neighborhood. And every one of these keys fits something there at that house. They all are designed for something special and have purpose. But none of these keys fit that lock either. Every lock in our life, by design from a creator, by the locksmith of all locksmiths, has a purpose. And as we return to that creator with our life, handing over anything and everything, offerings. He starts to, in return, give us something as we simply say, God, I surrender. These things that I can't accomplish, these things that I can't do, these things that are overwhelming me, Father, I give them back to you. And all of a sudden, from heaven, starts to come a key that now doesn't belong just in heaven it belongs in your hands by design God gives us special keys with a special purpose to unlock a specific potential shall we try this key this morning I pray it works Lord oh that's a good start Every key that fits a lock must then do a job. Only God can start to turn the keys of our life. And some of you call that a struggle. We call those things trials and tribulations. James chapter 1. Oh, we all walk through trials and tribulations, don't we, church? But we must remember that God's given us a key. He's given us something that will unlock potential. It will unlock something that's necessary. It will unlock something that will change the world around us. It will unlock something that will speak to our families. It will unlock something that will feed our families. Amen. And all of a sudden when we let God keep His hands upon our life and we don't become the harlot that rejects Him for the ways of the world, God's mighty right hand will start to turn our life. Oh. And the potential is there move that lock. Amen. The bolt came out. But sometimes God says, now that I've locked you into something, amen, if you're called to be a minister of the gospel, now that I've locked you into something, now that you're called to be a great teacher of the word of God, now that I've locked you into something, now that you're called to be a, the best greeter that's ever been at a church, now that I've locked you into something, maybe a new job, maybe a marriage, Maybe a new home. Now that I've got you here, God says, I'm fixing to turn you again. Amen. That the door might swing wide for you. God doesn't just take our life and manipulate it. God, by His beautiful, perfect design, simplifies our life. And starts to give us something we've never had before by placing the keys of life in our very hands. And it's because we don't become the harlot that rejects him when it gets difficult. We don't become the Christian that becomes wishy-washy when we look at the seas of life. We become as Peter, that as Christ calls us, we say, yes, sir. And we step out of the boat that we can testify of walking on water, new water. You know, Christ is still the only one, amen, that can make liquid into solid, just like that. He's the only one. And He's calling to us this morning to let Him keep His hands upon our life, that He may turn, mold, shape as we are the clay, imperfect, into His perfect hands. Somebody give the Lord praise this morning. Amen. Give her, give her help a hand this morning. Thank you, River. Those keys are also representative of other things in our life. 
They just don't fit into the mode of what God's asking for us. It can be sex outside of marriage, addiction to drugs, alcohol, pornography, selfishness, greed, lust of money, loneliness or depression, self-righteousness. Church, only Jesus can open the door of life to us. Amen? Without Christ, we shall all beat against the goads, doing what we think is right, but only obeying to be disobedient. Paul kicked against the goads. You remember the scripture in Acts 9. He thought that he was a holy and righteous man, doing a righteous act. He thought he was doing his very best for God. He believed he was following the ways of righteousness. But he was soon to encounter the one and true only way. The one and true truth. The one and only true life. In Acts 9, 5, and it said, you are who... Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus. Come on and follow me a minute. Who are you? Who you are persecuting? God doesn't want us to be disobedient. He doesn't want us to kick against the goads. For it's hard when we kick against the goads in this life. It's hard when we choose our own way, our own path, our own desire. It's hard. It makes life difficult we do things in the flesh. But Paul was a man driven to find truth. He wanted to know the absolute in this life. What is truth? Have you ever asked the question to God? What is truth? What does it mean to be truthful? What does it mean to have the answer to all life? We can be driven by these things, but I can tell you this, church, as a human being, we need correction. Here's where truth is found. Truth is found in correction. And correction comes at a cost. The cost of what? The cost of fleshly desire and worldly pursuits. You must deny your flesh and return to the Lord. You must return to the altar of repentance, surrendering the things in your life that will only destroy you. There's only one key. There's only one life. There's only one Savior. There's only one Lord. Amen and amen. Won't your heart be swayed by the things of the world this Thanksgiving season? Amen. Be thankful for the things that you have. Don't be regretful for the things that you don't. Let God emphasize to you how much that He has already blessed you. If you came here this morning with breath in your lungs and a heart that beats, you're blessed. If you came here this morning with somebody by your side and family members that you can hold near and dear to your life, you are blessed. If you have something to do that God has given to you to do, then you are blessed. And just as Gomer was swayed towards the things of the world, God's people are swayed too. Hosea 2, 2 through 7 says, bring charges against your mother. This is a prophetic word to the nation of Israel and to America today. Bring charges against your mother. Bring charges, for she is not my wife. Jesus is speaking in this type and shadow to this beautiful people called the Israelites. Nor am I her husband. Let her put away her harlotries from her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. Lest I strip her naked and expose her. Has anybody ever felt exposed when you got caught doing something you shouldn't? As in the day she was born, and make her like wilderness, like a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, with nothing to bear, barren, and slay her with thirst. Have you ever been thirsty for something because you have nothing to drink? I will not have mercy on her children. This is a a hard word here. For they are the children of harlotry, for their mother has played the harlot. She who conceived them has behaved shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up your way with thorns and wall her in so that she cannot find her paths. She will, she will chase her lovers but not overtake them. Yes, she will seek them but not find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then it was better for me than that. God, amen, by the power of His Spirit, 
is speaking to every single person in this world of all creation. Say, yes, that's me this morning. By the power of the Spirit of God, He is declaring to you that you must return unto Him, that salvation might be yours. If you are chasing after the things of the world, there is nothing there for you to find but heart of tree and despair. Can I tell you today, church, that God loves you so very much that He's still speaking and giving up truth to you this morning. That if you'll turn from your wicked ways, that if you'll call on the name Jesus, that He would forgive your sins and that He might heal your land. God is still declaring unto us that we must find Him first in all things. Somebody say amen. In all your searching for truth, find Jesus. In all of your striving to survive, find Jesus. When all else fails, say it with me. Find Jesus. And when all hope seems lost, find Jesus. Jesus will be your rescue after you've tried everything else. And He will never, never stop loving you. Drugs, alcohol, abortion, suicide attempts. Am I describing things around us in this city right now? Sexual de deprivation, homosexuality, incest, lust of the flesh, greed, deceit, lies, untruths, gossiping, pornography, loneliness, brutality, narcissism, child abuse, rape, murder, violence, fear, doubt, unbelief, mashed emotions, selfishness, idol worship, whether it be your job, money, position, or title, gluttony, self-righteousness, which is doing things you think are right only for self-promotion or self-preservation. God hates these things. But he loves you. Because you know that you are his most precious possession. And giving your life to these things will only cause death. Anything separated from God will surely die. Psalm 68, 20, and I close with this, says this. For God is the God of salvation. And to God the Lord belong escapes from death. I'm going to call us to prayer as we close service today. If you could start that song, Mr. Royston, thank you very much. God is looking for those. He is seeking for those who can be found in righteousness. God is looking for those who will return to Him. Call Him their first love. I'm going to ask you this morning, if you're struggling with any of these things that were mentioned this morning, God, amen, has made a way for you through Jesus Christ. He is the hope of your salvation. He is the hope of all eternity. Don't let today pass by. Don't let this moment pass you by. God loves you. He cares for you. He's given his best for you. This morning, if you're lacking in any of these things, you feel like God doesn't have a hand on your life and any of these keys, I want to ask you to come to the altar this morning. I'd love to pray with you. I'll ask our prayer team to come up too. Amen. Let us sing the praise of the Lord. This morning, Lord God, we turn to you. With grateful hearts, God, we return. And that you are the keys of all life, God. You are the promise of all things, Father God. Within your hands, Lord Jesus, is the answer. Anyone this morning needing prayer for answers in your life, God says, I am your rescue. I am your salvation. I am the one, amen, that will set you free. And for the whom, whom the Son sets free, yet still is free indeed. Somebody say amen to that this morning. Would you all stay with me, please? Hallelujah. What a wonderful Thanksgiving service we've had so far. Maybe you're watching by live this morning and you need rescue from things in your world that have tried to take you out. Maybe the enemy has come to you even today to 
try to tell you that you're of no value. And the things in your life, they're no good. But can I remind you today that God still loves you no matter where you're at. He still has a place for you at his table. And all you have to simply do, amen, is call his name. This morning, would you say this prayer with me in congregation? Would you join with as we say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for I've been a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and change my life that I would not be that man or that woman again, but that I would be a new creature in Christ Jesus, that I am set free from sin and sickness and the ways of death. Today I choose life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I believe if you said that prayer and you mean it with all of your heart, that God is now the God of your life through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you to teach you of a new way of following after Jesus. This morning we are blessed, church, to know that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. And we can say amen to that. Hallelujah. And amen and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Are you grateful today? Are you grateful today? And I am too. Thank you all for being in this service with us. We have a lunch prepared for you downstairs. There's turkey down there. There's ham down there. There's some good fixes down there. Come on, somebody. I think if you got a hungry belly, we got something to put inside of it. I hope you're filled with the Spirit this morning. If you need any prayer, I'll be here for a few more moments. Otherwise, you're dismissed to go downstairs to have lunch. So if you have to go, have a very blessed day and a blessed week. No services this Wednesday. We love you all. God bless you very much.